Good morning and welcome to News for Hearing Impaired. I'm Shubhendu with my colleague Sonia. Let's begin with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's mega roadshow storms Biju Janata Dal's bastion in Odisha. PM will begin his two-day Gujarat visit today by holding a similar roadshow in Surat to reach out to people at the grassroots level. PM Modi attends the BJP National Executive Meeting underway in Bhuvaneshwar. Party's top leadership deliberate on expanding its mass space in eastern and southern states. BJP Chief Amit Shah cautions party leaders against complacency, says the party is yet to reach the peak. At least eight engineering students from Karnataka's Bengal district drown in the sea of Vairi coast in Sindhu Durg district of Maharashtra. Three rescued students undergoing treatment, one of them critical. Heat wave continues to hit several parts of the country. Many cities in Odisha and Telangana record maximum temperatures above 40 degrees. National capital Delhi also experiences sweltering heat. At least 45 evacuees killed in a suicide car bombing in Syria. The rebels targeted the buses carrying Syrians evacuated from two government-held towns of Fua and Kafraya. And in sports, India's Kadambi Srikant sets up an all-Indian affair in the Singapore Open Badminton Final with Visai Pramit Srikant beat Indonesia's Anthony Ginting 21-13, 21-14 to enter the finals of the Singapore Super Series. The two-day BJP National Executive Meeting began at Janata Maidan in Bhuvneshwar on Saturday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lighted the lamp along with other senior party leaders. Besides party veterans LK Advani and Murli Manohar Joshi, BJP President Amit Shah, Union Ministers, Chief Ministers of 13 BJP dual states and three Deputy Chief Ministers are attending the meet. Party's top leadership are deliberating on strategies to expand its mass space in eastern and southern states with an eye on the 2019 Lok Sabha polls. Quoting BJP President Amit Shah, Ravi Shankar Prasad said that Prime Minister Modi has emerged as the most popular leader since independence. Ahead of participating in the National Executive Meet, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a roadshow at Bhuvneshwar and received great public support. Prime Minister will felicitate today the kin of prominent freedom fighters of the state he will also offer prayer at Lingaraj Temple. The 54-meter-high temple is one of the brightest examples of Kalinga style of architecture. The temple premises is spread over 25,000 square feet area. BJP President Amit Shah on Saturday cautioned party leaders against complacency, saying it is yet to reach the peak as he rolled out plans for its expansion in states where it has been traditionally weak. In his inaugural address at the BJP's two-day national executive in Bhuvaneshwar, he also asserted that the party's golden era would arrive when it rules across the country from panchayats to parliament. Laying down his ambitious growth plan for the party in South and Eastern India, Shah rejected the contention that the saffron surge had reached its peak with its domination of Central and West India and maiden winds in states like Assam and Manipur. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will begin his two-day Gujarat visit by holding a roadshow in Surat after arriving in Ahmedabad today later in the evening. PM will embark on a roadshow over an 11-kilometer stretch between airport and the circuit house. On Monday, Prime Minister will inaugurate Rs 400 crore Kiran Multi Super Speciality Hospital and Research Centre built by a trust. Prime Minister will then go to Hira Bors, SEZ at Ichhapur village in the district to inaugurate a diamond polishing unit of Hare Krishna Export Private Limited. 
India on Friday decided to call off the upcoming maritime security dialogue with Pakistan as tension between the two continues to grow over the death sentence Islamabad handed out to former Indian Navy officer Kulbhushan Jadav. A delegation led by Pakistan's Maritime Security Agency was scheduled to visit New Delhi for four days from April 16. Earlier, India had toughened its stand against Pakistan after Islamabad rejected India's request for consular access to Kulbhushan Jadav. India demanded a copy of the chart sheet and consular access to the retired Navy officer Kulbhushan Jadav, who has been sentenced to death by a military court in Pakistan. Home Minister Rajnath Singh once again reiterated that the government is doing everything it can to ensure Jadav's safety. In another development, Pakistan has prepared a new dossier to be submitted to the United Nations with more evidence against Kulbhushan Jadav. Heat wave conditions continue to grip major part of the country. The mercury rose in many parts of northern India and hovered around the 40 degrees Celsius mark as Odisha continued to sizzle and normal life was affected in Rajasthan due to heat wave in parts of the state. It was a hot day in the national capital with mercury crossing the 40 degrees Celsius mark in some parts of the city. Eight students of an engineering college from Karnataka out on a picnic drowned in the Arabian Sea off the Wairi coast in Maharashtra Sindhudurg district on Saturday. The students from Maratha Engineering College in Belgaum had gone to swim in the sea. The deceased were part of a group of 47 students. Around 30 of them had gone to the sea for swimming. The police said, adding three students were rescued from the sea and 19 others swam to safety. The incident occurred around noon at Vairi, a coastal hamlet near Malwan town in the Konkan region of the state. Supreme Court Judge Justice Deepak Mishra has urged the senior citizens to raise their issue and problems and authorities will try to solve their problems. He was addressing a seminar in Faridabad on welfare of senior citizens, issues, challenges and the way forward. Emma Morano, an Italian woman believed to have been the oldest person alive and the last survivor of the 19th century, died at the age of 117. Murano, who was born on November 29, 1899, died at a home in Wabenia. According to the U.S. based Genotology Research Group, Murano ceded the crown of the world's oldest human being to Jamaican Violet Brown, who was born on March 10, 1900. Murano's death means there is no one living known to have been born before 1900. Petrol price has been hiked by rupees 1.39 per litre, while diesel price has gone up by rupees 1.04 per litre with effect from Sunday. The Indian Oil Corporation announced yesterday. IOC added that it intends to start a pilot project in select cities daily for the daily revision of petrol and diesel prices. National Conference President and former Chief Minister Farooq Abdullah has won the Srinagar parliamentary seat in the Bipol. He defeated PDP candidate Nasir Ahmed Khan with a comfortable margin. Farooq Abdullah expressed his gratitude to people after winning the Bipol. A huge car bomb blasted a convoy of coaches carrying evacuees from besieged government held towns in Syria, killing at least 45 people. It shattered coaches and set cars on fire, leaving a trail of bodies, including those of children, as the convoy waited in rebel territory near Aleppo. There were fears of revenge attacks on evacuees from rebel-held towns being moved under a deal. Amateur video showed several burnt-out buses and vehicles in flames as those injured fled the area and firefighters attempted to get the flames under control. The bus convoy had evacuated people from two Shite villages 
the day before in a deal between the warring sides. A new North Korean missile test from Sinpo area in the South Hamkyong province failed, the South's Defense Ministry said in a statement. The failed launch came a day after North Korea showcased nearly 60 missiles, including what is suspected to be a new intercontinental ballistic missile at a giant military parade to mark the 105th birthday of its founder, Kim Tu Sung. As hostilities in the region surge, Trump has sent an aircraft carrier-led strike group to the Korean Peninsula to press his point, while the North has launched a flurry of rockets. Kidambi Srikanth defeated Indonesia's Anthony Sinisuka, Ginting 21-13-21-14, on Saturday to set up an all-Indian final against B. Sai Pranith on Sunday. Srikanth, ranked world number 30, was in impeccable form to hand his 20-year-old Indonesian opponent a tough defeat. This is the first time there will be an all-Indian men's singles final at a Super Series tournament in badminton history. An earlier B. Sai Pranith coasted into his maiden Super Series final after defeating South Korea's Lee Dong Kyung 21-6, 21-8 in just 38 minutes in the semi-final of the Singapore Open. Pranith had played three straight three-game matches, all lasting over an hour. In the previous three rounds, had lost in straight sets the last time he played Lee two years ago. And with that, we have come to the close of this bulletin. Namaskar.